going to address this gradual adaptation to uh, the internet. I know early on when the internet started becoming an issue with IP, with the uh, uh, Uverse, I was telling people don't stream, don't stream because you're you're accepting the reduced uh, quality. Well, that was a short-term solution to an immediate problem. Uh, obviously, the internet's here. The long-term solution, though, is for uh, probably a rewrite of the Communications Act in, in D.C., which they keep talking about. Eventually, they're going to have to do because they got to address this issue. So, as video, as Comcast video revenues decline due to the thing, all the things Dave's just been talking about, their modem revenues are increasing, right? So Brand X, which took all that away from us, has to come back. We have to be able to collect a reasonable rent for the use of the right-of-way. And so that is long-term the answer. And then the other part is, yes, satellite, wireless, they all have to pay their share in order to uh, utilize and have access to the customers who we, as a municipal government, keep safe, warm, watered, sewered, all the things we do, they got to pay their share, just like the gas station on the corner and so on. Unfortunately, that's not an answer that's going to happen tomorrow, but that is the long-term uh, game plan, uh, I think, across the board. So, questions, generally, specifically or otherwise? That's the answer the government's going to pay for what they want, I guess. Um, what about public access? Is that going to die? That's a tough well, one. You know, you're, you're in there with public television, who we've been talking with, and some of you follow the uh, email trails. Uh, Deborah and I met with uh, Detroit Public Television. They're very interested. They need local content. We have it. Um, I, think, I think that's an avenue. I mean, they're directed to have it. Uh, we don't have the direction. It's just what we do. So I don't, I don't think it dies, but I've listened to these guys, or what Dave thinks. You, that's why you got to get current. You get, you've got to be relevant to the folks walking around with these things. It, the, the killer is is that, of course, public television itself is seeing just massive, you know, de decreases. We have uh, WKAR at Michigan State University, just you know, phenomenal studios, uh, phenomenal facility, and it's like walking through a ghost town in there. And so, certainly, um, collaborating is a big deal, but I think that uh, finding these other revenue streams um, will be important. And there's all kinds of talk out there. I mean, another presentation that you would see from me if we were talking about IPTV, of course, would be monetization. And that's kind of a, a, a dirty term in the, the P side of things, right, for the public access. But it's something that just like uh, at uh, one of the high schools here in Michigan, I know that they were selling ad space at the prom because they didn't have enough cash to do prom and they didn't want to give up on prom. And so, you know, whether you agree or disagree, uh, that's a tough one. There's a lot of decisions to be made, but I think that we're going to have to get really inventive. Certainly Roku lets you monetize your channel. You can hook a PayPal account to it. You can say, if you want to watch this program, you know, here's a 50 cent donation or a dollar or whatever. You know, I'd call it a donation. So there are things. That, there, there's an interesting story. Um, I'm real involved in our high school, and, and uh, uh, you know, we had a band thing, and uh, they wanted me to shoot the video, and, and then we produced the DVD, and they wanted to sell the DVD for $20. And so. Right at the very end, they said, uh, hey, would you make the order for him? As if I hadn't done enough, you know, <laughs> will you make the order for him? And I'll never forget, it was a Sunday night, I was feeling a little devious. I created the order for him, I got down here, subtotal, and then I hit carriage return, and I typed in a word, donation. And I put a line, and then I put total. We made more in donations than we did sell, you know, we made like five or six thousand dollars. Wow. And we made more in donations than we did in selling the DVDs. And I think the weird thing is, is that we just don't ask. Um, mm -hmm. I, I always got frustrated in school where there would be all these capable families and all these people who, if you just ask them, they would sign up. You know, we Latronics has uh, hosted the light show. It's a big thing in Holt where they, at halftime, we have about 500 band kids come out on the field and they shut all the lights off. And so, Latronics sponsors glow sticks and LED flashers, and they all do their 
you know, they haven't run into each other yet and done the domino thing, which, you know, we're waiting for. But uh, um, it's so funny. I ask for volunteers, I get 25 people like that, but nobody ever asks. So I think we're just going to have to start asking more, maybe. Okay. Any thoughts? Uh, Technology's never died. They just transform. Yeah. You know? So, I, you know, I think you just have to roll with the times and uh, just stay, like you said, stay current. Yeah, I, I know for myself, um, I would pay, uh, and I don't now because they're just giving away, but the high school football game thing, all of you do that, that's money. I mean, you could, that, to me, that's the best example of what isn't being um, utilized. I mean, you got the commercial aspect of the franchise, but, but I mean, high school football games are huge. Yeah. Yeah, Sell that stuff. We don't make money. Sponsorship for yeah. the football team, you know. Which you had to ask for it, probably. Yeah, we have to go out. Yes. Out. And, and government's not set up that way. I have, I've been talking with some folks uh, in New York about an idea that at some point I may talk with all of you about. But, but the question was asked in a very broad context of, well, why, why isn't government doing this now? And I said, well, you know, the role of government historically has been to be a record keeper, to maintain the status quo. It's not our job to be innovative. It just has never been. That's the job of private enter enterprise. Well, obviously, you know, really since the Reagan days, um, that's changed. And, and you've you got to be entrepreneurial. Everybody expects it. So be entrepreneurial. The technology's here. And if you think about the cost, today of what is available versus the cost of this kind of technology 20 years ago, it, it's a huge bargain. It is. It Absolutely won't. incredible bargain. That Roku player that we were passing around, which is their top of the line, that's 78 bucks at Sam's Club with an HDMI cable. $78 for their best one. You know, it does everything. Wi-Fi, hard, hard wire, and it comes with an HDMI cable that if you walked into Best which Buy. Which 20 bucks at least. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it is. It's crazy affordable. Other questions? <coughs> All right. Well, Dave, Keith, okay. thank you very much. Okay. Quick question for the audience. Yeah, please. Get, get you guys wake, wake up here. Uh, <laughs> what, what are you inferring? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I was curious to know uh, how important demographics is to, to the group here. Um, I actually, I, I was looking up um, before coming in here. Uh, uh, the Pew, Pew has a, a lot of studies on mobile. And who's using it? And I think there's there's a, an assumption that the old rules, uh, typically with the internet, apply to mobile uh, in terms of what demographics are adopting the, this technology. That it's basically the same thing as before. And there's this huge gap and, and things like that. And the reality is that mobile is much more accessible to a lot more people. And the old rules do not apply to this technology. And I know a lot of people have built into their mission to you know to give access to lower income to uh, underserved communities and things like that and so i was just curious to know if, if there's any questions along those lines because mobile is definitely different along those lines i think it's a great point uh, in talking with pbs they've got national programs which we don't typically care but they they offer we'll exchange for the local stuff so now all of a sudden you know, if somebody happens to have your peg channel on their, as a, you know, on here as an app, they can access more than just a local city council meeting. I, you know, obviously, there are all kinds of issues, but I think it's a great, great point. Yeah, because we are the elderly, the shut-in, the poor. I mean, that's, that's peg, right. peg world in right. many respects. Yeah, the, the, the fastest growing group in terms of household income, I'm looking at the Pew study right now, this is just from March of this year, is the less than 30,000 group. They grew by 12% uh, this past year. Um, that's the fastest growing uh, group of all the income brackets. And What's that mean? Is there more of them? Less than $30,000? Uh, uh, adoption rates are increasing the, the most rapidly in that group compared to the other groups. I mean, it's actually uh, high among them all. $75,000 plus is increasing by 9%. Um, uh, 50 to, to 75, increasing by 11%. I mean, they're all jumping up. But the fastest growing groups are the ones that, when we think of previous uh, versions of technology, 
and, and there's a lot of groups that always got left behind. It's typically the same groups I think a lot of the, the, these, you know, the, the media centers serve. But that, yeah, that's not happening in mobile. There's, uh, there's the, the adoption. And, and, and you're seeing this not just uh, in this country. A lot of the third world countries, people are, you know, you call it leapfrogging. You know, they're, they're going from having nothing to having mobile phones and, and desktops, laptops, computers, all that kind of stuff. They're not even thinking about that. And they're jumping to, uh, to like fourth generation um, uh, mobile networks and things like that. So they're just jumping all the way ahead, even though they didn't even have used the last year, last um, generation technologies. And, and it's just, you know, th these devices are much less expensive than, say, going out and getting a computer. Um, and they're, they're giving them access to a world they didn't have access to before. So the demand's definitely there. So uh, definitely consider that in, in your uh, missions. There's yeah. one really quick. There's one other thing I'd like to say that is super important that uh, Keith just made me think about. In this new world of IP delivery, there's something that you can have that you've never had before, and that's statistics. You can see yes. that this program, everybody's interested. You know, it might be a program that you don't think anybody's interested in, but you see, wow, everybody's viewing this. You can then tailor your product to your customers, and that's using almost that instantly. Yes. And, and so I just, I, you no, know, when you were saying what you were saying, yeah. that, that hit me. Go ahead. There are actually, <laughs> um, seriously, just go to the booth after another half an hour demo. You'll have your no, uh, Ryan. If you could maybe make sure that Sarah has plenty of those out. I, I apologize. Uh, I had higher expectations, yeah, lower expectations. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you. And of course, thank Ralph for setting